I'm sorry, I'm in the cold. I'm cold. <laughs> this weather is pretty strong here. I need to inspect it. Uh, anyway, after all you hear about me, I'm still alive, which is something. You know, most when you get all this stuff, and I've worked 50 years of my life in my career, you're supposed to be dead by now. But I'm definitely not dying. So, today is a very specific lecture I want to talk about. I'm going to sit and be very comfortable. It's not about my work as a performance artist, which I'm the mostly known. It's about my work with people who don't know so much. And it's really relating to the show here in Crystal Bridges, which is about crystals. And um, I've been working in something called transitory objects for a long period of time. And there is a, actually a story about this whole thing, which I start. Everything starts in Great Wall of China. In 2000, in, in well, no, God, not 2000, in, in, in 1987, uh, Ulai, my partner, and me, we start walking Great Wall of China. We actually wanted to walk this Great Wall since eight years and asking Dutch the Dutch and the government which we live in at that time and um, Chinese to give us permission to walk the wall. China was not open at that time. And every time we will get permission, and a wonderful letter saying actually that they excuse us and it's not possible in this time and it's not possible in that time, in this time, and take eight years. And after eight years, we give the, to the friend of us who is Chinese expert all these letters and say they're so enthusiastic, but they always say no to us in a very polite way. They look at the letters and say, but there is 17 different ways of Chinese saying no to you. And they exercise all the ways. So we have to have a different approach, which we did. And through the government of the, the, the Holland and the, the China, we have this uh, agreement collaboration that we actually go to walk the Chinese wall. Well, I start in the yellow desert and I start in a, in, a, in a yellow sea. And each of us walk literally two and a half thousand kilometers. I don't know how many miles, but it's lots of miles. So each in the total 5,000 kilometers to come to the end and to the middle and say goodbye to each other. I had to walk the walls, the, all the, 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 the actually Gobi Desert and the mountains, which I did. Wall is most of the time a part of the cities, not constructed, and it's completely in the ruins. And many ways I have to climb, and, and, and using ropes and the other you know, climbing equipment to actually can cross the wall in that way. So we met in the middle, and then we actually say goodbye to each other in our collaboration of 12 years. It was very sad and very kind of um, difficult moment in my life. I was 40 years old in that time. So, now we start with the minerals. Every time I was walking the wall, maybe we go a little back just to see. I was walking on the wall. I was always walking on the different type of ground. Sometimes it was clay ground, sometimes it was uh, the green rocks, which actually was a copper based, sometimes was the black rocks, which was iron, and sometimes was, you know, the, 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 even the pieces of amethyst on the ground and so on, and tourmaline we found on the way. So every time I, I, I walk the wall, on the end of the day, when we're going to the village to sleep, I will ask the translator to give me the oldest person in town that, uh, or village which I can talk to. Sometimes they will bring me people over 100 years old. I even have this, uh, this possibility to talk to somebody who's 120, always a translator. And every time I will ask them about the kind of, um, how you call them, stories about the wall. And they, they talk about the wall like a great dragon who is fighting green dragon or black dragon. And there's always these stories about dragons fighting, which actually was relating to lee lines of our planet because the wall was built as a replica of Milky Way on, the, on Earth, and was finding these geodetical lee lines. And uh, so the ground was connected to that, to that energies. And I understood that when I walk on the quartz ground, it means something different in my mind. When I walk on the, on the ground with clay, I feel different physically and mentally. And when I walk on the, on the ground with iron stone, I was different. Then I actually decide to create some kind of um, the, 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 my own um, replica of my, of my body, human body, connected to the Earth's body. 
So I saw the eyes of the human body as a clear quartz. I saw the wisdom teeth as the amethyst puntas. I saw the, my womb as the amethyst geodes. I saw the heart as a rose quartz. I saw the liver as a tourmaline. I saw the blood as, a, as a, the, the hematite. And I saw the, the, and I saw the, 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 the nerves as, a, as a copper, copper minerals. So that actually there are these two bodies. And I realized that the first time my performance was not visible by the audience because literally audience was not there. I was walking alone all the time on the wall, as well like the, the same. So the audience absence cre created the idea with me that I should really make the work that reflected that, that absence of audience to create transitory objects who, are, who can replace the, the, my experience, but they give the experience of, the, of, of, of the, that kind of experience through the minerals to the public. So those in consciousness are one of the first work which you see in the museum. So can we play the video, please? So basically, I cover my face with the, with the crystals and um, I, lie, I um, lie under these crystals and I just breathe. And that's all what happened. And I call this piece Dozen Consciousness. So I see the, the actually the, the crystals as a simplified computers of our planet. And they, they, cre they can absorb any electronic or light impulse of the memory of the planet. Even now in the spaceships, they can carry in the small crystal chips entire history of the planet. So they have this incredible energy absorbing. So those in consciousness is this potential that I see in crystals. And I'm just lying and breathing. And sometimes the, some crystal fall around, down. And I lie this in this position of three hours. So, the China was a very difficult experience for me because I actually, not only did I say goodbye to Ulai as my work partner, but he was also my lover and my love of my life. So saying goodbye to everything was something that I didn't want to go back to, to China anymore. So I was looking for the places where I can find the, as much as possible crystals and I can actually work and create these transitory objects. So this is my, actually the house where I was living. I went to the different mines all over Brazil, south, north, uh, the, 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 the central Brazil, Minas Gerais, uh, Marabá, uh, close to, uh, to the Amazon rivers and so on. And I really look for the, for the places. The accommodation was pretty simple. So this was one of my houses. I was living there. I, um, I will go to the mines and I will work with the miners. And the miners never saw a lone woman completely crazy looking for crystals in the middle of nowhere. So this was a very, very my favorite photo, but even on this one, even more. So they would say to me, this is so dangerous, don't go, you're going to be raped. I was really feeling good there with these people because they've been, they really was trying to understand what actually me as an artist want to work with crystals because they will take crystals and they will sell them to the tourists or they will break them in pieces and make the jewelry. But nobody was really working with them in the way I was actually doing there right in the mines. So I will go to the big, the, the, the sources of quartz crystals, look at them. I will sit in the front of the quartz crystals and I call this uh, entire, this process, waiting for an idea. I will sit there, I will lie there, and I want that idea come from the stone. I didn't want the idea come from my head. I, I didn't want to construct anything. I want the material literally tells me what to do. And the material was actually telling me what to do if I was staying there long enough. Because I believe that vibration of the crystals, you can actually receive vibration and you can respond to. So this is inside of, uh, with amethyst, huge, huge, uh, the, the, the kind of the reservoir of amethyst puntas, which I was sitting there in mines and lying. And the miners will just let me do that. They said, she's crazy. I mean, she's going there and lying for hours there <laughs> in these mines. So the, the crystals and geodes, they will literally find sometimes directly into the rocks. They have to break the, the, the stones in order to, to, to create the space to, to, to take them out. 
So these geodes, the huge kind of called the huge crystals, who have this inside this uh, this se se segments of the amethyst, which have to be clean. I have to I have to work to them. I have to clean them. In some points, we have to cut big pieces in, that we can transport them and so on. The 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 cutting of the of the of the uh, crystals was very big and very difficult process because you need diamond sauce and water and takes sometimes for three weeks just to cut one crystal and I was there all the time in the process. Sometimes we will op open some of these geodes and we will find the water and this water is 35 billion years old and I remember the first time we, we the water came out I drink it myself I got so sick looks like it was not a good idea but I was thinking, but I was thinking it was the purest water ever, 35 billion years old. That's something. So this is another of my studio right now, just improvised with a piece of wood on on the containers in the middle of the crystals. So I create this the objects. I call them in two parts: transitory objects for human use and transitory objects for non-human use. So these are for the human use. So it's very important, this second part, the mental departure is possible. You, you always come full of your thinking and process in your head, or the language of memory, or whatever is coming to your head at the moment. But the idea of the crystals is really to empty you and to give you this pure energy back. To also to be in the point of here and now and nowhere else. So when you are actually in the front of his crystal, you have to happen, that emptiness has to happen, and that energy transmission can happen. Again, you know, writing in the front of the in my house. So the drawings was really important. Drawing was the starting point of thinking about the crystals and what to do with them. In this little drawing on the on the right side. I, I start drawing the shoes. I wanted to make crystal shoes. So when I say to the miners that we have to cut crystal shoes, they really think I, I really lost it. I will tell you how that crystal shoes look look different. Then the chairs with the with the elements of crystal. Then the, that that on the left side the geodes, who actually I call them inner sky. So they are just the different drawings that all of these drawings become actually living work. These drawings are made really literally after I will spend a long period of time waiting for an idea. Then idea will come, and then all I have to do make a drawing, and then go to the mines, pick up the right material, and realize them. So, one of the first pieces I made, it was, a, it was the the site-specific project in Tokyo, and is uh, very close to the Shibuya, in the close of the, the department store, which I had a wall, and I put the pillows made from rose quartz, and I placed them in the three different positions of human body, head, heart, and stomach. And what the public was asked is to literally press the body in those three positions and wait there till energy is, is transmitted. And this piece had a huge success, and people will just go from the shopping, leave the shopping area somewhere in the backs, and they will go and do this, and just stay there energized. So these pieces I've been doing in different cities, in different places. This one is in Tasmania, in the Museum of All the New Art, where I use chrysocolla as, as a pillows. Or this one is in Düsseldorf, in the Kunst, Kunsthalle, in the museum. So the people who have different feeling about crystals, somebody will tender them, they tenderly hold them, or they will kiss them. So this is one of my favorite. This is for the family use, the boy and the mother and the father. So the idea is that this kind of the transitory objects, you can have your own home, and just before you take your espresso or coffee in the morning, you will go and you will place, place the wall and stay there for a while, get your energy, and then do your day. So this is another one in Oxford Museum in England. 
And then I go to the next one, which I actually understood that crystals are cinema, and I call this a crystal TV. So basically, you're sitting on the little chair and you look into the crystal. And you, 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 if you get right vibrations out of the crystal, you actually don't need to see a television. You see, you, see the, you see enough. You can project your own mind into crystal. So this I done to feel the energy with my hand. Here I have the group of people actually sitting in the front of the crystal cinema. So I also create objects who are three basic body positions, sitting, standing, and lying. So they're made of copper with the pillows. This is the old place on the wall. This was a very important move in my work. Here, basically, the, the public is sitting on the wall and become the work itself, and the artist is free in the space. Standing, that was sitting, standing, standing. This is artist looking the person on the wall. So you exchange the roles, lying. And again, you go to the museum, but you're not supposed to touch the work. Here, you interact with work, and you become one with the work. Sometimes I will put my bed very high in the museum and stay there eight hours all day long. And then only when museum closes, I can get leather to come down. But also, it suggests to the public they need to take time to have experience. As much as longer as you bring the time into, you, into experience, the longer you get, you, you get outcome, you, you, outcome came out. So the, it's, it's almost mathematical. The longer you give, you give time, the better things you get out. So this is the ones what I was telling you with the, with the geodes. So this is the geodes which I actually erected, put on three legs, and I call them inner sky. So the suggestion here is that you close, standing under the geode with closed eyes and, uh, and uh, really feeling the energy of that void. So this, is a, this was a, another in the museum with a, the, it was so moving for me to see the woman with the child for a long time standing under this geode and getting energy while the other people are placing their bodies against the pillows in the background. So I also have the simple, simple objects like rose quartz and chrysocolla, and I just call the mineral table. And I just put these two elements on the metal table and expose as a sculpture. This one is the geode which I drink the water from. And I call them wounded geode because when we opened it, there was a crack in it. So I create this table, two chairs, where the chairs are high, so the people who are sitting, the normal public, can't touch really with their legs the ground. That I want to have the different feeling of gravitation, but not able to touch the ground. And I want them to reflect on the wounded planet, on the Earth, on everything we are doing wrong today with the, with, with the, with the ecology, pollution, warming of the planet, and so on. So that wounded geode for me to present the kind of wounded body of the, of the Earth. So then I came with this crazy concept of amethyst shoes. They are really heavy. I don't know how many pounds, but, but we are talking rocks. <laughs> and um, so I have this, um, I made these pairs of the shoes and in a kind of position of the steps. And what I'm telling the, the public is, you know, take your shoes off, enter with naked feet into the amethyst shoes, close your eyes and make silent departure without any movement. The idea was you're not making physical departure, you're making mental departure. And that is mental departure in one frozen stop in time and space. So this text is going over my shoes, I just didn't realize. On the screen. Okay, nothing is perfect. <laughs> but that's the shoes. <laughs> Okay, there's another waiting room. I create this very the little tables with the with the objects again, you know, different chrysocolla, the lapis lazuri, rose quartz, and the black quartz, 
and then I asked public to stand, sit, and in a kind of waiting room, observe the minerals and reflect of the planet. Everything is about medita meditation and reflecting on the planet and connect it with the material. So this is another one, the bed with the ladder. So the public was asked to go up and lie down or can lie under. And, and so in the both ways, the crystals react. So then this was not enough. I wanted to have a fresh chamomile. So I put the fresh chamomile in the very simple tin bath with a crystal pillow and asked public to lie down. So this was in the museum in, in, uh, in Bonn and public liked it so much that they have to read us guards to get them out. The, and the entire museum was smell fresh chamomile. It's something like, I know each of them was 30 kilo of chamomile tea, fresh chamomile. And the crystal. So there is another way of lying that I put crystals under the, the, the bed. In the, in the, in the, in the, in the very big um, amount of tables so that people can experience at the same time. Another bed, another bed. The chairs, the chairs are always higher that you can't touch the ground. That this feeling of child, feeling like child again, that actually, Gravitation is different. So this is new work we made with concrete for the Venice Biennale, last Venice Biennale, with a crystal called conversation piece. The two people can sit and have conversation. And the crystals are kind of communicating between each other. And now we are coming to the crystal bridge when I made the crystal towers with the crystals that you can actually stand in the, in the front and in the back and experience in the three positions of human body the energy of crystal. Installation was placed when I was not here, so I'm seeing tomorrow for the first time how it looked like in real nature. And I hope the trees are still with the leaves there. I'm really excited to see it. So I really want to see something that is kind of working together with the forest and not abusive. <coughs> so they're like a trees in itself. But they also have to think about weather and the circumstances. So I put them in, a, in, a, in, the, in, in the, the, the very, very strong uh, stone, which is granite. Granite, a part of marble, is the, is the, is the most uh, heavy and the strongest material on the planet. So this is combination for the first time I made between granite and crystal for this installation. I made them before with wood, but this is the first selection with the, with the granite. And then for non-human use objects, one of the first work I done again in Okazavi, Okasaka, it's in Japan, the museum for, um, um, uh, is museum for how you call this? It's a museum for uh, the, wo the work that you can't be explained. Like, you know, the universe can't be explained. Like a black holes or different galaxies or the, how it become life on this planet. Everything which we don't have answers. This is the museum. And I created the, the, the chair for spirits who goes through the entire museum, huge, all the way up. And, uh, <coughs> sorry, and the chair for the human. So the human is sitting on the chair and looking through the entire, entire you know, museum to the sky, into the spirit. So the spirit is up. And the spirit doesn't have a seat. The spirit doesn't need a seat. Another, another version of the chair for the spirit. Always for the human and the spirit. So if you make something which is uh, visible, for something like invisible, like a spirit, then invisible become visible. So that how looks the chair. It looks like very tiny. So this is generator in the city of Amsterdam. We just put different crystals and wait in, in the bus or waiting for the tram. You actually can sit one of these crystals and get energy just by reading newspaper. 
Then I create, you know, the crystals, like acupuncture of the crystals in your face. So the idea was, if you um, uh, answer me 150 questions from very intimate from your life, I will, Dr. Bramovich will come, I will cast the face, your own face in wax, and I will take the crystals and make acupuncture that you put next to your bed, and while you're sleeping, you're getting cured. I mean, this is idea. And that's the ideas of crystal heads. The idea if the if the really crystals can use as a voodoo. In this time I use only my head. Experiment will succeed. The patient is life. I made twelve heads, six from white wax and six from black. And now non-humans, non-human use. I made the chairs that human can sit and I made a little chair for the spirit next to it. And if you feel, if you don't see spirit sitting next to you, it's not my problem. <laughs> but that's the little chair. She definitely feels something because she put the hand there. She had the headphones who completely blocked the, 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 the audience was asked to dress white coats like, like lab coats for experiment. They was given the headphones who completely block the sound and they have to sit on the chair and uh, next to the spirit chair and feel the energy. So the different types of chairs. Just going fast, so many. Then I was also thinking that crystals have to be clean. So how we can clean non-human? How we can clean the spirits? The best way to clean the spirits is with crystals. So I made the broom, and I made the brush. So the crystals can be safely clean. The the sorry, the spirits can be safely clean. I also made the chair for the animal spirit in in the south of Sweden. There is a there is a the very big place where they're hunting the deers. So I create the chair made from the dead deer horns, and all the deers will come in the winter and eat food around, which I provide them. And to create the spirit totem. Also, I made the the bed for dead spirit, which is made from lead as a dead material and rose wings as a quartz, qu rose quartz wings. But that's actually dead spirit. The lead doesn't have life. And now, I don't know who saw the last time when I was here. I was showing this film. It's seven minutes and it's about Brazil and how everything started and where my work is now. So please bear with me. Is everybody saw this film before? Looks like not too many. And if you saw it, forgot it, I'm sure. So let's, let's go and see that. Okay. My relation to Brazil start so long ago. I went to the mines just to looking for idea. I actually want minerals to tell me what to do. When I ask miners if I could just sit on the chair deep in the mines or lie in the bed and let me alone there for a long period of time until I wait for an idea, they think I was completely crazy. When I told them that I got an idea to make shoes out of amethyst, huge minerals, weighing 70 kilo. They could not believe. How can walk in these shoes? They ask. I was telling them, but these shoes are not for walking. These shoes are for mental departure.
I don't think we need art in nature. Nature is so perfect already, without us. We need art in the cities. We need art in the cities which human beings don't have any time. In the cities they are polluted. In the cities they have too much noise. We have to take experience from nature and transmit it into the cities. I always believe that the function of art is a function of bridge. To bridge different people from different social backgrounds. Different religious beliefs. Different races. But it's also about communication between physical world and the spiritual world. Or just simply between two human beings. I think this trip was very important to me not just to get new ideas, but also to open my mind into something different. After I come back, somehow the puzzle came together in a very clear and bright image. I understood that I have to give tools to the public to experience their own self. I have to just blend in. I have to be like a conductor because I'm always performing in the front of the public. I'm engaging with the public. The public is my mirror. And I'm the mirror of the public too. Everybody have trauma. Everybody have loneliness. Everybody have fear of death. Everybody have pain. I'm giving part of myself and they give me part of themselves. The only way they can understand 
in much profound level what performance is, is they make their own personal journey. I am removing myself completely from the public. Public is the work. In the front of me is a cave. And I'm going to explore. So, this was the presentation about crystals. So, if anybody have any questions, I was thinking, let's answer three questions. That's a good number. <laughs> this is well, my we, trick, you know. <laughs> then maybe we'll two, four, and then I will say yes, two, four, two. For any questions, if you raise your hand, we'll be passing mics on either side of the room. There was a microphone, yeah, please. You can ask me anything. Can you call for louder, please? Okay. Um, whenever you experience the sensation of the vibration from the crystals, um, how, how would you describe that experience? It's very complicated. You know, you have to really have kind of long uh, relation to crystals, and you can't have it right away, you know. First of all, it's very important. Let's say you, you go to shop and you want to buy the crystal that you want to use or to have it. You, you can't do this just by looking at the shape. Um, you should do this best by closing your eyes. And by, actually, crystal have to call you. It's very funny, but somehow you will feel totally intuitively which crystal kind of fit in your hand the best. And something will, will happen that is unexplainable. And that's your crystal. And then, and then you, you, know, you start with there. And then you create contact, really contact, like, like, you know, it's so funny that every, every, every watch has crystal quartz who actually is there forever. Every, you can store the knowledge, you can store the memory, and you can evoke this memory out of crystal to you. And it's really a relationship, intimate relationship that have to be developed. And each person has different experience. I can't explain mine. You have to have yours. It's very interesting how the crystal have the past, present, and future. In the past, from centuries, been used in healing, in, in, in occult, occult uh, the magic, and so many other ways. Then the present, you know, in, in, in our everyday life. And now in the future, entire new technology is based on crystals. Ah, hello. I, I just finished very large retrospective the last three years of seven museums of work, you know, traveling, not in America, but in Europe. And this retrospective is finished. But my new work that I'm also working with lots of things with crystals and the brand new work is going to be shown on the 20th of um, September next year in Royal Academy in, in London. This show is a huge pressure on me because in 250 years of Royal Academy existence, never been women artists showing in the old space. So I'm the first one. It's like pioneering. <laughs> Thank you. You know, in, um, when, I, when I start work, doing performances in... Uh, in uh, Belgrade, in ex-Yugoslavia, I felt like a first woman walking on the moon. And now I'm again feeling like, you know, first woman walking on the, on the moon again. Anyway, and so this is the, the time that I will be shown my work with crystals. I also am doing something else, which is very, not to do with crystals, but very different interests of mine. It's, uh, I am directing and playing in opera. 
which I actually have idea for 30 years, and 30 years is such a long time, but I never had the right money, right circumstances, right possibility to realize. And it's very much to do with something that maybe women know more than men, but I'm, I should not be really selective. I think men know too. It's something about broken heart. You know, that you can love so much that you can have a broken heart and you can die from broken heart. And the, the person who really died from broken heart was Maria Callas, which I really loved for, for a long time. And I almost died from broken heart for the, somebody, but, you know, happily I didn't. But I wanted to now make this homage on broken heart, and it's called Seven Deaths of Maria Callas. And the opera consists only of dying scenes. Doesn't, there is no opera, just dying scenes. It's, it's, it's strangulation, knifing, burning in the fire, jumping, jumping from the building, uh, the heart attack, madness, whatever, name it. Only dying from death, seven deaths like this. I just done filming with Willem Dafoe for the video, the, the clip in, in, in Los Angeles. And there was two deaths, every, you know, because we had to spare the budget. One in the, I die one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. So now I'm only interested in life. So the, my new show in Royal Academy is called Afterlife. It's not a bad title. You know, after all the dying, there is afterlife too. Okay, any, any other? Did we have two questions already? Third. Okay, I wanted to ask. Um, I have a crystal that's like near and dear to me that I kind of Can take everywhere. Can you call everywhere. louder? I'm still oh, here. Yes, that's okay. Sorry. I have a crystal that I kind of take everywhere with me, and I was curious if you have one or what type of crystal it is that's more near and dear to you that you kind of take everywhere if that's something that you have i did this before and i and then i stopped <laughs> i slept with so many crystals and tourmalines that i really had the injuries in the morning <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> i kind of turned around so now i don't i don't I, I really don't i i i stopped doing that i think that somehow that you can actually evoke the crystal you can you can call the crystal when you need it you don't need to have physical presence, but in the beginning you definitely need physical presence. But I, in Brazil, I went to the mines and I got these huge, large crystals, and my house in the country is full of them. And I really feel different energy. I think that the entire museum here is different energy since you have all the show with crystals right here in the front of you. So something is changing there. You, you have, it's really great to go to the show and, and just stay in front of these amazing spaces of crystals you have. They're really like very rare, they're all, you know, incredible quality so strive from there first and then hold one for yourself but it's not like i'm crystal guru you know i just i just actually discover myself by chance walking the walk of the great wall of china that there is a connection between mental body and physical body and the planet and the crystals and everything else around and that was really personal discovery so now we have three questions now we should get four There is four in the front row. Microphone, please. So speaking of heartache and dying and mentioning your relationship with Ule, how has your previous work gotten you ready for this work whenever you were 40 and experiencing the Great Wall of China, Lots of heartache, lots of emotion, lots of pain, looking for peace, all those things. How do you think that prepared you for that work? And how does this prepare you for your next? Okay, this need to take coat off. <laughs> <sighs> so, it's a big, big transition. First of all, I start really, you know, I start as a painter and I paint. And then one day I was lying on the, on the, field in the middle of nowhere. We were spraying clouds, you know, painting clouds. And I looked there on the field and I was looking to clouds. And in this particular moment, it was only blue sky, no clouds. So I look into blue sky, waiting for clouds. And out of nowhere, 11 military planes, ultrasonic, just came and made these lines in the sky, the very fast. And I look how these lines was made. And then I look the disappearance of the lines. And I was so fascinating about that kind of drawing was just made in my in my in the front of my 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 eyes and i felt some kind of spiritual revelation that actually 
I will never go to studio to paint something which is two dimensional when I can do anything I want. I can ask planes to make drawings for me. I can, I can use the body, I can use the fire, I can use the earth, I can do whatever I want. So it's like, fuck, this is unbelievable. So I went, I went, I went to, the, to, the, to the military you know, base and ask the, the, there the commander if he can give me 12 planes, he's throwing me out. He said, <laughs> he said you know that much cost to, to make your planes flying for you? He said, who are you anyway? So anyway, it was not possible. But then I never went to studio and I really start working with the body and work with the body more and more. And the first thing I went is to, I went to the hospital to feel, to, to actually went to witness three of the most ex difficult exploration of human body. It was a replacing of the hip, it was heart operation and open brain operation. And it was hours. And I look and I see, you know, what bodies consist. It's a, t it's a physical thing. You, they use the same like making tables. They use screws, they use the metals, they use, you know, the cutting, sewing, whatever. And then they put together. And then what is the body? What is the soul? And I start first pushing my limits in my work, mental and ment first physical limits, how far my body can go. And I really done very hard performances, which I happily didn't die, but was difficult, I, which I don't show tonight. And then, and then I, after that, I done everything. I, I understand that one thing that I never touch is mind. Mind is the most difficult thing to attempt. You know, you can endure any physical pain. Emotional pain is the worst pain of all. And that, then I start really inter be interesting in, in emotions and in, a, in, a, in, a, in, the, in the mind. And that, you know, meditation, crystals, uh, doing long duration of performance work, which involves so much endurance, but at the same time willpower to get to the state of mind, which is like here and now, and transcendent all that. This is the transition. And really came, each work bring me new problem and new idea to to kind of transcendent to new work in new work till I'm now. So now when I, this movie, when I go into the cave and I say to, to the public is my work, public, you are my work. You all of you here, you're my work. And then, you know, after that, it's new to explore new territories. And I learned a few things, and this is actually end of the lecture, no more questions. <laughs> so so the, when I learned a few things, that's very important to really to, to understand that you should not be afraid of anybody and anything. And every time somebody say no to you, it's just the beginning. And the next thing that always remember that love is the most important thing in the world and to be tender and to love human being in totally, generally, and to, you know, to make you work that really can lift human spirit, not put your spirit down. It's very easy to put human spirit down, but to make the work who lift the spirit. That's the purpose of my life. Thank you.